Good morning. Good morning. Bless God. We are all standing for the entry of the Bible as we sing, Here I Am to Worship. join me in the call to worship which comes to us from psalm 66 reading from verse 1 to 8 we'll read alternately shout with joy to god all the earth sing the glory of his name make his praise glorious say to god how awesome are your deeds so great is your power that your enemies cringe before you all the earth bows down to you they sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. Come and see what God has done. How awesome his works in man's behalf. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever for his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him together. Praise our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Our gathering song as we'll sing, How great is our God, and Lord, I lift your name on high.
Sí. Good morning. There we go. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another day where we are here and able to worship you without fear of persecution, without fear of judgment by others, Father God. We thank you for the ability to meet in this place where we can learn and worship more with you. We have always been a selfish people, Father God, and we recognize in our selfishness that our motives are not always pointed towards you. We ask and pray that in this time that you will remind us that you are sovereign God and that you are the maker of all things. You are our God. We ask that as we come in this time that you will bless each and every person that is here. You will bless the time that we have spent with you and that we will leave this place praising you for the gifts and many blessings that you have given us. We ask that you take this time, devote it to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom is come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be assured of God's pardon. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. God does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. In Jesus Christ, we are pardoned, we are forgiven. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. A warm Savannah welcome to all those of you worshiping with us today here in the sanctuary, and of course, our brothers and sisters on, the, on Facebook and YouTube. We trust that this service today will be a blessing to all. Special welcome to our Cayman Islands Regional Mission Council members worshiping with us today our Cayman Prep and High School Board, staff and students worshiping with us today, and anyone else who we might have missed at the door, if you are, it's your first time here, I know most of your staff and parents, maybe, we welcome you. Um, quick reminders for us here at Savannah and others who might care to join. Next Sunday after service will be a baptism at Spots Beach. Um, we trust that you'll be able to join us to help celebrate those of us who have chosen to make public announcement and show of our dedication of our lives to the Lord. And now we are having a special visitor on the 28th, our new moderator. The Right Reverend Gary Harriet. It's called Meet Our Moderator. It will be held here at Savannah on Friday the 28th at 7 p.m. Please put it in your calendar. It's going to be a special joint youth fellowship of all the churches on Grand Cayman. They are our United Churches on Grand Cayman. On Friday evenings, most of our churches have youth groups, so it's going to be one of those um, evenings like that and wanted savannah we're wanted here we're found wanting volunteer leaders to assist with youth ministry on friday evenings 
great will be your reward. Every little thing we do to our young people, it will be a reward. Might not be immediate, but we'll see it down the road. So please give a thought, and if you can even spare half an hour. You don't have to teach. We need supervisors as well, just to monitor. So please give it a thought. And we are in terrible times, tumultuous times, and we remember those in our midst who are grieving, those with health challenges. We continue to offer prayers for them that all will be well. And we would like to say our own brother Nordell is in church. Good to see you, my brother, and Jodian and granddaughter. And now, happy birthday. We find any occasion to celebrate, and the list is long. There's Renice Basil on the 7th, Doris McLaughlin on the 11th, Karen Osborne on the 13th, Vanessa Ramoon Narcisse on the 14th, Maxwell Solomon on the 14th. And if you are visiting today and you are celebrating a birthday between today and Saturday of this week, we will be singing for you, plus those persons who are in line. Um, anniversaries might have been a dry month. Mr. Noel. <laughs> thought, we are indeed the light of the world, but only for our switches turned on. So since we are the light of the world, as in Ephesians 5 verse 8, let us walk as children of the light. Do have a blessed day. Thank you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, friends all, as I stand to bring greetings on behalf of the Cayman Islands Regional Mission Council, the Synod of the United Church, I'm going to invite you to stand briefly as we mark a moment of silence in memory of Mrs. Janelle um, Clifford, who served for 31 years at our school and passed away in the past week. Lord, as we sojourn in this life, you have surrounded us and our institutions with people who will stand up for you even in their professional life. We thank you for the work and worth and the lives that were touched during the time of Mrs. Janelle's tenure at Cayman Prep and High School. Pray that you surround her family at this time and the entire CPHS family as we mourn her passing. May light perpetually shine on her. In Christ's name, amen. Please be seated. As I look around, I noted some parents, students, fellow governors, the chair of our Board of Governors, admin, academic, and ancillary staff members who are all sharing in this service. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Cayman Islands Regional Mission Council and the Synod of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. You are integral to the partnership and mission that we so loved and really have been working at 
for many years, over 70 years. As a church, we have established many institutions, and Cayman Prep and High School stands out, as your motto will say, you know, let your light shine. And so it is that we come at a time to show our appreciation and to affirm you once again. For those who are new to the um, staff, I say, this is how we do it. And we want to journey with everyone to feel that sense of partnership that we started over 70 years ago. Cayman Prep and High School is a mission of the United Church. And as a result of that mission, we continue to keep our fingers on the pulse as it relates to the success stories that we have heard for many years. And so feel free, knowing that you're part of a greater institution, the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, of which Cayman Prep and High School is a part. And so we welcome you today and affirm you as we worship together in this place. I'll now invite our director, Ms. Deborah McLaughlin, as she comes at this time to bring greetings. But just before she comes, just before, sometimes we pastors get a little ahead of ourselves. We have had many, as I mentioned earlier in my prayer, who have shared their skills and knowledge with our school. And we have one such person in our midst today, our immediate past chairman. Um, you all know him as Mr. Williams, Mr. Orman, and we in the church circles, we call him Pastor Orman, and Pastor Williams, and his dear wife, who are worshiping with us today. And so Mr. Williams served our school as chair of the Board of Governors, and so in this way, we want to also recognize his stewardship and his skills and all that he brought to that process. Um, he's not only in the pulpit on a Sunday morning, but you would have seen him when he was chair of the Board of Governors at the school quite often, ensuring that everything is going according to plan and according to design. And so, um, Pastor Williams, Orman, Mr. Williams, you have served us well. And so we want to show that level of appreciation um, to you this morning. I'm going to invite you to come up. I know it's, yes, you're puzzled, but <laughs> we do things in a surprising way, right? So we're going to invite you to come back this time. On behalf of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, and in particular your service and stewardship of the Cayman Prep and High School as the chair, as you served between 2013 and 2021 in recognition and appreciation of your sterling leadership as the chair of Cayman Prep and High School, we present you this token of our love and appreciation of all that you have done and you continue to do. Yeah. I now invite the director, <laughs> Ms. Deborah McLaughlin. Chair of the Cayman Islands Regional Miss Mission Council of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, Reverend Rohan Forrester. 
Regional Deputy General Secretary, Reverend Dr. Yvette Noble Bloomfield, Chairman of the Board of Governors of Cayman Prep and High School, Reverend Donovan Myers, Vice Chair for Mission, Ms. Tessa Bodden, Governors of Cayman Prep, Former Chairman of the Board of Cayman Prep, Mr. Armand Williams and Mrs. Williams, Reverend Ray, Minister of Savannah United Church, and also one of the teachers of ethics at CPHS, Cayman Prep and High School staff, members and adherents of the Savannah United Church, Cayman Prep and High School parents and students, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good morning. <laughs> I confess I was hoping someone would have done that before so I could have said protocol having been established. It brings me great pleasure to bring greetings on behalf of the staff of Cayman Prep and High School and to thank the United Church Region Mission Council and the Savannah United Church family for hosting this special service to demonstrate your appreciation to the staff of Cayman Prep and High School for the work and service that we provide to our children, our parents, and the wider community. We are very, very grateful for this, and we appreciate the continued support of the church as we strive to ensure that we shine our light outwards each day. And thank you, Ms. Olga, for reminding us that to do that, we have to cut on the light switch. I wish to thank the two chaplains for our schools, Reverend Forrester, our primary school chaplain, and Reverend Mason, our high school chaplain, who take part in devotions at the school assemblies throughout the academic year. Thanks also to Reverend Dr. Yvette Noble Bloomfield and the other United Church ministers as they participate in assemblies at our schools as well as teach the ethics lessons to our year 11 students. And a special plug to Mr. Noel, who also teaches ethics for us. Thank you, Mr. Noel. And they also deliver the Christian life sessions to our year six students, as well as participate in those numerous school evening events, as well as including our school on your prayer lists throughout the year. We are happy to be able to return to this annual event this year as we've been unable to do it for several years due to the pandemic. It is really good to be back together again, and you look very good. This church looks great, standing from here, packed. Reverend Ray is smiling. January 2022 marked seven to three years since the United Church opened the doors of Cayman Prep and High School. We give thanks to God for his steadfastness to our school. Thanks to those leaders within the church, ministers, governors, principals, teachers, and all our staff, our students, and our parents who contributed and continue to contribute so very much to our school. We have grown from very humble beginnings to a thriving and nurturing school providing top quality education today to 1,015 students with a staff of 136. To God be the glory, and may the light of Cayman Prep and High School continue to shine. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is not often that we get a chance to show our appreciation to the leadership of this school who do such a wonderful job on our behalf. So this morning, I'd like to call on just a few people who make this possible for us. Miss Debbie, could you come up here, please? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Mr. Carl Murphy, principal of the high school. You're welcome. I'm sorry? I want to stay here. No, no, this is fine. Uh, the principal of the primary school, Mr. Robin Davis. <laughs> and, <laughs> and 
the business manager of the school, Miss Jane Scott. Thank you all. Just before we, we continue, did I notice that picture I said earlier on? The funeral service for Mrs. Janet is going to be held on. Uh, October 22nd at 2 p.m. here, and we continue to pray for the, for the family. God has been so good, amen? And his, his, his measure of love cannot be expressed. And so as we go into a time of offering, usually we would have come up the aisle and place the offering in baskets, and then you go back. By the look of things, that is trouble. <laughs> so I'm going to invite two elders, if they could come and just take the baskets and go along the aisles and receive the offering, even as we receive the ministry of the instrumental at this time. Right, we will be blessed by the, 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 the team from the Cayman Prep and High School, the musicians. Let's worship God together.
us pray. Loving God, we bring our gifts of tithes and offering to you because all that we have owned or received belongs to you. We thank you for the gift of your church and institutions established in your name, like Cayman Prep and High. We ask that you bless us and these gifts as we dedicate them and ourselves to your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our children will stay with us today. Philippians 2, verses 12 to 18. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. This reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 18. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city, cannot, a, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear. Not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. This is the word of the Lord.
Thank you, choir, and thank you all for the richness, the ways in which we have expressed and shared thus far. I wish I knew who to talk to, that a law can be changed, that one person can make a motion and move it and second it and mandate that we meet again next week Sunday here like this. <laughs> Anybody second it? Yeah. You see why I need the one man thing? <laughs> it's good to be here and I greet you in the name, in the name of, of Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the ways in which you have been speaking to us since we came through these doors and we pray that you will continue, Lord, to stir our hearts as you speak to us in corporate yet in, in personal ways. May the words of this mouth, the meditation of our hearts continue to be pleasing to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The theme for the school, the motto for our school across the many years that we have seek, sought to be impactful and to be transformative and to be engaging and to be involved in community building is let your light so shine. Am I right? Let your light so shine. So you will understand on an occasion such as this, we would want to be reminded as if we needed to, but just the same, yes, to be reminded, but also to be affirmed and to be encouraged that as a school, but even more so as a congregation and as a council and as a church and as a people, that we ensure that our light continue to shine or our light begin to shine, perhaps for some. The texts that were chosen for today from Philippians chapter 2 and St. Matthew chapter 5 have a lot to say about, about light, a lot to say about, about light. And many of us from whatever part of the world we are from are born might have known this little song, Jesus bids us shine with a pure clear light, like a little candle burning in the night. And some of us forget it, or some of us don't know it, right? In this world of, oh, we know it. So we must, you in your small corner, and I in mine. I wonder if as Jesus spoke towards the end or the middle of his sermon on the mount in St. Matthew chapter 5, whether he was thinking about that. I wonder if as he spoke about salt first and then light and begin to say to them, you are the light of the world. I wonder if he was thinking something of the sort. I want to more think that Paul, as he wrote Philippians chapter 2, was even more succinct and, more clo and closer to linking the issue of light and darkness. Because Paul, in Philippians chapter 2, he, he writes that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you must shine like stars in the universe. As I thought of let your light so shine, and hearing Paul speaks of a kind of world in which the light should be shining, I wondered what is it that characterized darkness at that time? What is it that characterized crookedness at that time? What was it that characterized depravity at that time? And wondered whether there might be some similarities to darkness of this day, 
to crookedness of this day, to depravity of this day. And if the saying is true that says the more things change, is the more they remain the same, I want to suggest that maybe they were the same or the same kind or of a different type that there was today. In one sense, we live in a world that is characterized by darkness or pockets of darkness or incidents of darkness. We just celebrated or commemorated September 11, when we remember that the world changed since that day. That date characterized and marked by a sense of anarchy, wielding of power, perhaps senselessness, and the quest to get at, to destroy, to send a point, maybe to prove a point. Since then, the world is not the same. But perhaps darkness is not just about that type. That darkness, is, that darkness is also perhaps about callousness, about selfishness, about self-centeredness, about waywardness, about being personal and more self-focused more than anything else. I wonder if darkness could also be characterized by arrogance and maybe ignorance darkness of one kind or, or another. And it's spelt across the ages, the eons, the epochs of time, darkness. But darkness in Jesus' time could also have meant, you remember he was talking here on the, in the Sermon on the Mount. In that sermon he attacked and addressed so many issues some of them had to do with the Pharisees. Some of them had to do with the leadership of the day, both polit political and spiritual. And so darkness could, or could therefore mean anything that goes or went and still goes against God's laws, God's principles, God's expectations for his creation to live in a good world or to live in wholesome, relationships, harmonious relationships, relationships where we care for each other and are concerned about each other. Across the world, that still permits. There's ever an age we live that is called where people are selfish and self-centered. It is now. Kick, kick, selfie. And it's about what people say to me on the social media, how they respond to me. And if they don't respond to me in a particular way, man, I am in serious trouble. We live in a world of darkness in one way or another. Jesus here says, let your light so shine shine in this world. And what could he have meant by that? I want to suggest three things that Jesus could be saying to his disciples and to the world and even to us when he said, let your light so shine. In the first place, I want to suggest that he was saying, we need to go through a time when we imitate me and my father. Elsewhere in St. John 1, verse 5, the Bible says, Jesus is the light of the world. St. John 8, verse 12, God is light, and in him there is no darkness. And here Jesus was saying, you are the light of the world. I want to suggest, uh, recently I was giving a little story to the children in my other church. And uh, I was trying to draw some, uh, some, some implements. I tried to draw a lantern. And I said to them, well, what is this? And they guessed, it's a lamp, sir. It's a candle, sir. It's the moon, sir. It's the sun. 
And I asked them, what causes these things to shine? And they all said battery or the CUC. But when it came to the moon, one little bright boy said, the sun, sir. I said, yes, you are right, because the moon doesn't have a light of its own. I wonder if when Jesus says you are the light of the world, whether he wasn't saying in the first place, you're going to have to either imitate me in doing what I do and how I would do it and why I would do it. But beyond that is to depend on me to make a difference in this world. Depend on me, imitate me, cause for you to work through me to make a difference. And that's what it calls for us. As we engage life, whether we are parents or children, whether we are bankers, and even more so as educators and administrators, God would want for us to imitate him how we think about people, how we relate to people, how we teach and empower one another, how we would want to treat with each other. I tell you, sometimes if it wasn't for the love of God in us, it wouldn't have been easy. And even with the love of God in us, it's still not easy. But it wasn't for the love of God, sometimes we as teachers would have marked off some students. Am I right? I said, that one head too difficult. <laughs> and if it wasn't for the love of God in us as administrators, we would have said, boy, this colleague, mm -mm. but for the love of God. Yes. If it wasn't for the love of God with some neighbors, Am I right? Yes. And some persons that we, we encounter on the street from day to day, thank God for the shining love of God which shines through us. And for those of us who allow him to work through us and to shine, shine through us. I believe Jesus was saying in the first place, you have to depend on me to do what you need to do. Yes. Reflect me. Imitate me, imitate God, the way how he would have done it and for the reason for which he would have done it, try to do it just the same. And then secondly, I believe Jesus was saying, not just imitate me, but impact the way how I would have impacted. Influence the way how I would have influenced. Invest the way how I would have invested. Jesus spent just three years, three and a half years on, in this earth. And the life he lived, the example he set, the foundation he laid caused the church to be alive even after 2,000 and odd years. Just by his example and his impact and his influence example and impact upon the disciples caused for them to continue after he left to turn the world upside down some places right side up and his influence continues and may i encourage us particularly as as educators remind us even as i reflected on miss jenny lee you know, I was told yesterday that I'd be preaching at her sermon. And we, we pastors begin to process almost immediately. What am I going to be taught? And I said, wow. That's, that, that's, that's a very interesting thing that we talk about a, a teacher who influenced lives. And you and I can read today because perhaps of a teacher. Sometimes some mothers teach way before you reach school, right? But today we are who we are because people invest in us. Today our thoughts, today our accomplishments have been because persons have invested 
time and energy and resources in us. And as educators in the first place, it's always about investing, impacting, giving, giving beyond the job description, amen? Giving beyond the time slot to be at school, giving beyond the expectation. And I know some teachers and educators who go extra miles and miles and miles, or should I say kilometers, since we are in metric these days. Extra because of the, the influence that they understand that they need to make and continue to make. No wonder they say teachers are born and not made. I have one in my family too. So Jesus was here saying influence, impact, invest. And by impacting and investing, you'll notice that once light is around, darkness disappears. And he moved from a concept before of salt, that once salt is around, then a wonderful difference begins to happen. In fact, for salt to be effective, it can't stay in the salt jar or the salt shaker. It must come in contact with the pork for it to be corn pork. <laughs> My apologies, Adventists, but <laughs> pork talk but a lot in this place. Has to be in, in contact, have to be touched be in contact. And so that's, that's what we do as educators, what we do as parents, that's what we do as Christians. We, we are in touch and we are not like the persons who stay one side and let's pray for them. Let's pray that something good happens, but in touch. And that's what Jesus did. He was with the common touch of the common people. And then thirdly, I want to read into the text and to pull something out. One that says introspect, introspect. And that thought came from the text, that was, a part of this that was read earlier on, where Jesus says, be careful you don't lose your saltiness. I want to suggest that he says, be careful that you don't lose your light. In other words, we need to be careful that we live our lives in such a way that we do not lose what we have. We do not lose our influence. We do not lose our impact. And that's easy to lose, you know. It is easy to lose by lifestyles that do not match with what is expected. Easy to lose by a loss of integrity and marring of character. Easy to lose. But likewise, on the flip side, I want to put up a positive to it, where, where Jesus was here, I think, saying, and I'm saying that we should always ensure that our influence is top of the top. <laughs> and we are moving with the times so that our influence can always be relevant. What do I mean? Uh, the teachers do something that they call PD. What is PD again? Personal development. <laughs> I've never been a professional development. I've never been a part of it, but I think it has to do with how do we get our staff relevant? Am I right? With the new ways of doing things, new teachings, new, so that our children would be at step 10 and we at step eight with how Google going on nowadays. It can be ahead of us sometimes if we're not on the cutting edge of what it means to be empowering and to be tooled. And so we are always being tooled and retooled and re-retooled as we continue to be trained and empowered to do relevant work. So part of what I'm saying, let us continue to be, to be effective. And I close with a story, which I think I've said here before, some long time ago. In the do those days when trains used to go across road tracks, well, they, they still do, but when they didn't have those fancy things going across and the bell, ding, 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 ding. 
come down over the track, we used to have a little man that would sleep at the track where it crosses the road with a lantern. And it doesn't matter what time of night, the man is supposed to be aware that a train is coming and he would come and stand in the road to ensure that any car that is coming is stopped or stopped because the train is coming. One night, he fell asleep. I don't know what he had before he went to bed. <laughs> Not corn pork. <laughs> I, I can testify to that. <laughs> but it's something maybe more spiritual. Come on, S. <laughs> Come on, S. All right? And not rear re nephew either. <laughs> not rear nephew. But he jumped up when he realized that a train was coming. And he was fast asleep. He jumped up and he grabbed the lantern. And he began to swing and to swing and to swing. And a car was coming and he was swinging. And a train is coming and he's swinging. And a car is coming and he's swinging. And none of them would stop. The car is supposed to stop. And it so happened that the car ran straight into the train. And a serious accident with death. He was hauled before the courts, and he was asked to defend himself. He said, sir, the lawyer defended him. The man was on the job. He was awake. He had the lantern in his hand, and he was swinging the lantern. Yes, are you sure? Yes, he was swinging it. Are you sure? Yes, he was swinging it the whole time. And the other lawyer asked, was there any light in it? Mm -hmm. Argument done. My encouragement to us as parents, educators, adults, Christians, make sure we have the light of God in our lives. Amen. Ensure that we continue to keep it trimmed, cleaned, and ready because the world is seeing us. Our students are seeing us. Our neighbors are seeing us. And there are many who want to experience the love of God. And we'll only get a chance to do that when they see us shining our light. May God so help us to keep the light shining. Amen. May I just invite members of staff to stand as I offer a prayer of intercession and blessing of the staff. <coughs> Let us pray. Lord, we come with a sense of gratitude, humbled by what you have accomplished in the professional lives of these, your people humbled by what you have called us to engage in a mission to educate, to nurture, and care for your children. For you have gifted them to us. And so you have also gifted our institution, Cayman Prep and High, with these, our staff, as they come to share with us this time. We acknowledge their professional life, we acknowledge their personal lives as well, for they are all members from different families. And so we pray that you'll continue to embolden them, for you have granted them the strength of mind, body, and spirit to not only be a part of this institution and to share their giftings, but to ensure that a certain professional standard is upheld in what they do and say each and every day. We thank you for them individually and collectively for the sacrifices that they have made and the sacrifices of their families. For many have cut across cultural barriers, language barriers, and stepped into this space. 
we are grateful, loving God, for them. And so we place them continually in your care and keeping, knowing that you have already accomplished in and through them the work that needs to be done. And as a church, loving God, may we continue to uphold them in prayer and surround them with the love and care that they all deserve as they impart knowledge and encourage and nurture young minds in their care. We pray, loving God, for your wisdom to prevail in all circumstances. We pray for your peace, that collegial support will be strengthened throughout this year and beyond. For we have seen so many friendships and partnerships forged over the many years. And so we continue to lean on you and pray that as you encircle them by the nearness of your presence, they'll experience the warmth of your love. And they will know that there is a God who cares for a God who knows and sees all things. Loving God, we place members of staff, administrative, academic, and ancillary members of staff in your care and ask you to continue to have your way with them. We pray for parents and students for the support that we receive over many years and even since the start of this academic year. We pray that that level of support will continue to be strengthened and that as we work in partnership, we'll recognize that we are all stakeholders in this great institution. Bless our work, and may we continually acknowledge and appreciate all who are part of this school. And so we partner, we share in this mission of your church. Bless all that we seek to do and have already accomplished for in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask the members of staff to just remain standing as tokens of our appreciation will be presented to you, after which I'll share the benediction.
immediately following um, this worship service, you're invited to the church hall, which is just um, next to the exit, and you're invited to enjoy a time of fellowship. And uh, I've always said, this church is known for that. Yes. And um, from long time, and one of my colleagues laughed at me when I said it, because then he found out I was looking in the wrong place for food. That food was reserved for a program, a ministry that they operate here named ASAP. And um, very intentional ministry. Um, you, 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 the acronym? What did I say? <laughs> oh, boy. Because in my mind, I'm saying, that doesn't sound like it. That sounds like when I'm sending a quick email. And, and Okay. But friends, we're truly grateful to have had you sharing with us. And we look forward to that time of fellowship and conversation in the hall before you leave. So don't run away. We want you to remain just for a few more minutes with us. I'm going to invite you to stand once again, members of staff and the remaining congregation, please stand. Let us receive the benediction. Let us keep on doing the things we have learned from Christ and may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Shine, Jesus, shine. 